Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be exploring the menu system of the Sony A6100. Let's go. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to start a series of videos on exploring the shooting menus because there's two submenus for, for uh, actual shooting controls with the Sony A6100. Hundred. Now, this is going to be the 6100 that I'm using, but most of this carries over. There's a lot of crossover to the 6400, 6500, and 6600 cameras. So if you have one of those, there's a lot of uh, reference material here that will be useful for you. One thing uh, that is a caveat, I've already done one video on the quick menu. And so if you haven't seen that, please do check it out because I will be skipping over anything that is duplicated in the shooting menu that was in the quick menu. So go and check that out. Uh, before we begin, everything that we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online, where we believe in teaching people all of the necessary skills so that they can create beautiful visual art with their cameras and other photography equipment. Of course, we've got a website, we've got a couple books, we have free downloads, and we have a four-hour introduction to photography course. So uh, I hope that you check that out and see if something there would be useful. But without further ado, here is the shooting menu for the Sony A6100. As we move through the menu for the A6100, I'm going to be skipping over anything that was covered in uh, our video covering the quick menu. And so if there's something that I say I'm skipping over because it's in the quick menu, go back and check out that video. It's going to be very helpful. Those are the most important uh, things that you need to learn, especially immediately getting accustomed to this camera or any camera for that matter. So we will be skipping over those, um, but I will be referencing them as they come along. We're just going to mo move through shooting menu one from beginning to end. And in other videos, we'll cover shooting menu two. And we're gonna break these up just so that each of these videos is a little bit more manageable and bite size. So here we go. We're gonna start with image quality. And this is uh, a couple options. The first one is file format. And here you're gonna see that it defaults to JPEG, but you can also shoot raw, which is the full uh, image quality that you can shoot out of the camera. And you can also record the image as a RAW plus JPEG. So it saves the RAW and also processes it into a JPEG, or you can just save the JPEG. I do have a video on the benefits of shooting RAW, and it's a, just an exponential difference in your editing capability. So I highly recommend checking that out. But this very first thing is how you change that and set the image quality that you desire shooting. Next is the JPEG quality. This is actually a compression decision. So how much it compresses out colors in order to save space space. Extra fine is your highest quality JPEG. It defaults to fine out of the box and then standard is your greatest amount of compression. While I don't recommend shooting JPEGs at all, if you decide to do so, please do go in and change this to extra fine as opposed to fine. It would be your best quality JPEG in camera. Next is going to be the actual resolution that's differentiated from compression, but your resolution of those images. Notice it is the JPEG images. Sony does not allow for changing resolution in raw sizes. Uh, you always shoot a raw at top image quality. So large is going to be 24 million pixels, and then it starts halving, so 12 and then 6. Um, personally, I don't recommend ever shooting a smaller JPEG. Uh, just because you can always take a JPEG and shrink it in resolution after the fact. But I've had many people that I've worked with who have set a small resolution and then forgotten later on um, to change it back and then shot important images at smaller resolution. So I don't recommend that. So now we're looking at aspect ratio. The actual native aspect ratio or the shape of your image off of this sensor is 3 by 2. 16 by 9 and 1 to 1 are the other options that you can shoot in. Again, I don't recommend changing these. 16 by 9 is used in video. And when you shoot video with this camera, it does default to shooting that video in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So this is just for stills. If you're shooting a still specifically for a video purpose, I suppose you could. But this is very easy to do in image editing. One by one, of course, would be processing out a square. Um, so this is where you would change that. Now, one thing I want to point out, my camera was not set to panoramic mode, but I'm going to tell you what we're looking at here, panorama size and panorama direction. So you can shoot about a 170 degree panoramic shot with any Sony camera. 
uh, and have been for a couple years now. You uh, start shooting the picture, it points uh, an arrow so that you know what direction to turn it, and you just turn the camera and it will shoot and tell you when to stop. Size will be the actual uh, size of the image, uh, file size, and direction is what direction you turn the camera. Okay, so you'll see that those are grayed out. I can't select those in the shooting mode that I'm in, uh, but that's what those options would do for me. So now we're going to have several options in front of us, and the first ones have to do with noise reduction, which is where the camera will go in and try to reduce noise generated by the sensor. And you're going to notice both of them are grayed out, long exposure noise reduction and high ISO noise reduction. Now we separate these, and the reason we separate them is that we might use one but not the other. And I'll give you an example. If we are shooting outside with night sky, for instance, um, a long exposure um, might be a very bad idea to do noise reduction because the camera might have difficulty with determining what is noise and what's actually a star in the sky. This is called the star eater issue, actually. Um, but if I'm also then shooting uh, not the sky and just shooting other things going on, I might use high ISO noise reduction for those shorter exposures. Now they're both grayed out and let's examine the reason why. So what we're going to do is take a look here and it says there that I can't actually use noise reduction because I'm in continuous shooting mode. So let's go ahead and take a look at changing that. Sony does tell you why something is not usable. So I've gone to the quick menu, changed the drive mode to single, back into the menu, over to the page that I want, and now I can turn long exposure noise reduction on and off. But if you'll notice here, I also cannot select my high ISO noise reduction, and it said the reason was I was shooting in RAW. So I can go back to my last page here, uh, go to my file format, change it to JPEG, and now I can select the noise reduction for high ISO if I desire to. And I can have a higher amount of reduction, a lower amount, or I can of course turn it off and do this in software later on. If you do too much noise reduction, you start losing detail out of the image, and you really don't want to over-process an image like that. So that's why you get those options inside of there. So next is going to be color space. Now this only affects your life if you are uh, working with a JPEG image. You don't actually collapse into these color spaces, these smaller color spaces with a RAW file until you process it into a TIFF or a JPEG. sRGB is universally red uh, by everything, but it's a smaller color space. And Adobe RGB is a larger color space, but it's only uh, uh, red by certain softwares and not all printers and not all programs are able to work with it. If you shoot with RAW, you don't need to think about this, but if you shoot in JPEG, you need to think about what your end goal for the actual product is. For instance, if you are printing a canvas, uh, machines that print canvas um, are oftentimes uh, able to do Adobe RGB if they are dye sublimation inkjet printers, whereas if you're doing some kind of a, an actual uh, metallic print, uh, those usually can only run sRGB. And so knowing something about the end result of an image is actually essential to make a selection here. Uh, or shoot the image in RAW and you don't have to think about it until you're actually creating an export of an image that you're going to use for a particular purpose, which is the uh, process that I use. Since this is kind of an interesting and more involved topic, it's a little bit beyond the scope of today's video to go in depth on it. But if there's interest, let me know in the comments and I will do a video about it. But that's how you choose your JPEG color space. So the next option, let's get out of this here real fast, is going to be lens compensation. Now, this is something the camera does when it understands the profile of the lens that's on it, because they are communicating, the camera knows what lens is on it most of the time. And if it has profiles for that lens, it can correct it. For uh, shading, that's if the lens loses light in part of the actual image circle. 
uh, chromatic aberration or distortion. And if we go into these, it's basically turning them off or letting the camera do an auto correction. You don't get to, with most of these, you know, actually decide the type. Now you're going to notice that distortion compensation is grayed out in this particular case, and it doesn't actually tell me why if I try to select it. So this usually comes about when the profile that the camera has for the lens that's on it does not include the distortion characteristics of the lens, and so it just grays it out and can't actually work with that particular feature. Um, I leave this in auto because every lens that I have has a, uh, an actual profile that the camera understands for it. Um, but you can actually turn these off if you're going to do corrections with software that, for instance, DxO uh, makes. So there's actually different ways of doing corrections for lenses, which is a, an interesting part of the uh, industry that we're getting into. So now we're on page three. And the first thing is uh, auto mode, and it's grayed out. Why? Well, because the camera's not set to auto mode. So real fast, I'm going to make a couple mistakes here and try to select this and uh, and do it in different modes. Uh, because if you're not in auto, it won't work. So here's shutter priority, and it won't work. And it tells me because I'm in shutter priority, it won't work. But let's go to auto. And now I can select it, and there's going to be two choices. There's a green and a gold. And let's tell you what the difference is. The difference is noise reduction. Now we just kind of went through this, uh, that we have some noise reduction options in non-auto modes just on the last page. But if you're in auto, you can have noise reduction, generally speaking, turned on or off. If it's on, it might delete stars out of the sky. Um, but it would also help you out for uh, longer exposures or really dark rooms uh, in a more general shooting sense. Um, if you have noise reduction turned on, also it really can't do a Wi-Fi connection to trigger the camera from your phone. So are the reasons why you might say yes or no to this. So that's where I get to choose uh, which type, noise reduction on or off, in auto mode. It doesn't work for anything else. So now scene selection. Now of course for this to work I've got to be the, in the scene selection mode on the dial at the top of the camera. So I'm going to go there. And now I get to go into it, and I've been set to sports, but I have several. I've got portrait, uh, that's the first one, and then I've got sports is the next one down, and then I've got things like uh, night sky or night sky with a portrait or macro. So this third one down is interesting, superior auto image extract. Now Right now it's grayed out, and it only works in one very specific shooting mode. So let's go and find it here. We're going to make a couple mistakes, and just to try to see that hey, it's not going to let me do it. If I'm in basic green auto, yep, doesn't work. All right. Uh, if I go out of auto mode, it's not going to work there either. In a second, I think I'm going to go to program mode, and nope, it's not there. But if I go back to auto uh, here in a second... If I go back to auto and then I choose the goal, the noise reduction auto mode, I get an extra option. So let me tell you what it is. I'm going to go to superior and it's just auto or off. And here's what it is. It's image extraction. What it does is it shoots a series of pictures and keeps one, the one that is sharpest by the camera's approximation. If you turn it off, it keeps all of the images. And so that way it can shoot a series at any moment, particularly for lower light environments where you might have motion blur in the camera and the shot somewhere in the middle is going to be the steadiest and it's going to chuck the other ones that you wouldn't keep anyway. If you don't want the camera deleting stuff for you, you turn it off. And that's only in that one very specific auto mode. So that's what image extraction is. Now the next thing down is the drive mode and this was covered in the quick menu and so a uh, video so we're not going to go into it but this is basically how many pictures do you get when you push down the button. Uh, we also find a couple other options inside of there. I'm going to switch back to manual just because I'm more comfortable with manual mode but that's covered in the quick menu video. Now bracketing is when you shoot a series of pictures at different exposure values. You can also bracket for white balance um, or for the auto enhancement and we explore those in the uh, quick menu video. Um, this first option inside of here is if there's a self timer and you get four choices off uh, and you get three actual timers, two, five, or ten seconds before it shoots a bracketed series and people tend to use that for shooting uh, HDR images, if they're going to combine the images later on, they'll set the camera up on a tripod, turn on the bracketing series, and do a self-timer for their bracketing. And then they don't have to uh, worry about if the 
just pushing the camera uh, shutter button down would move it enough to blur the final image because if you have any sort of movement if you're merging images later on you have a lot of problems um, with the merge and with the sharpness of the edges in the merge lastly in bracketing there is the order uh, option and so with bracketing if you're shooting uh, a series of images uh, some of them brighter some of them darker it's the order that you shoot these in so it says zero negative plus and that's one option but you could also shoot this in uh, the underexposed and then the zero and then uh, which is no change and then the overexposed or in any particular order set that you would prefer so next is a very very cool thing and I'm really glad that Sony finally put this into cameras this is interval shooting um, there used to be devices that were used a lot. They're, they still exist, but you see them less often because, well, frankly, this is now an option inside of the camera. And this is for an intervalometer, or what we call interval shooting. So let's go through this. This is where it shoots pictures at intervals. Now, this defaults, of course, to off, but it's going to shoot for you is what it's going to do. And you set up all of the parameters. So first is on or off. Um, obviously turning it on turns on the whole feature. So next is going to be when does it uh, start shooting. So it's basically a timer to count down. Obviously the minimum here is one second. Um, and then the maximum goes up pretty high. So shooting interval is going to be how long in between images in your interval shot. And right now it's set to three seconds, but of course we can go up or down. Notice there's a calculation at the bottom. Right now it's set to shoot 30 images with the exposure that's set up in the room that I'm in at the moment because the exposure set in manual, this will take an hour and 20, uh, one minute and 27 seconds uh, with three seconds in between. Uh, so that's what it's calculating right now, that if I started this series at this moment, one minute, 27 seconds. So as we change these particular parameters, obviously that's going to change at the bottom. Number of shots, now we saw that this was set to 30 just a second ago, but I can set up all the way through just under 10,000 images if I want to. It just is set to 30 uh, out of the moment, out of the gate. Now, auto exposure tracking sensitivity is for non-manual exposure modes, and this is how sensitive the camera is to changing the exposure during a sequence of images. Do you want them to be the same exposure? And if the light gets brighter or darker, such as a sunrise or sunset, do we see that difference? Or does the camera adjust exposure to keep the overall brightness of the frame the same? That's your choice based on your creative decision making. All right, so let's go to the second page here of our interval options. And now silent shooting in interval so this is is silent shooting turned on if you're in an environment where silent shooting might have a detrimental effect for instance under fluorescent lights where you might get banding we can turn this off but if you're shooting in an environment where you want to make sure you're not interrupting any of the proceedings you can turn this on so that might be useful if you set up a camera as a second shooter and there's no operator behind it, but you're shooting something like a wedding, you could set up a camera, point it where the action is, let the camera go, and it won't bother anybody nearby. All right, so shooting interval priority is the last option here. Um, and in manual exposure, you can't change this because it has permission to shorten a shutter speed in order to make sure that shooting at the interval given, for instance, three seconds, is possible. So if you were setting a longer shutter speed and the interval just wouldn't work with the processing time, it has permission to shorten or interrupt the uh, the shooting of an image to make sure that the next one happens on time that's what that effectively does that's going to be the end of this video i want to break these into pieces so that no one video is too long i know this is already long hope that you join me next time as i continue going through uh, the shooting menu for the a6100 thank you so much for watching and i'll see you then